Hey guys, Justin here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at this. It's Ron Seal High Performance Wood Filler. Now, I've used this product quite a few times in the past. I absolutely love it. It's a really good product. So what we're going to do is mix them up, let it go off and show you what you can do with it. So if this is the first time that you've checked out one of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you are notified when I release a new video. And as I've said already, we're going to be looking at this Ron Seal High Performance Wood Filler. Now it says it can do a number of things. It says you can paint it, stain it, varnish it, you can screw it, drill it, plane it, sand it. Now, might not get round to doing all those things, but we're certainly going to have a go. I'm going to mix some up and we're going to see what it actually can do. Now, I've got this scrap piece of timber here. Now, what I've done is I've drilled a few small holes in here. Um, because I'm going to put some filler on top of this area. And that's really just to allow the filler to sink in and, and give it some grip on the wood. So we can have a go plane in it and maybe chiseling this part of the filler. I've taken a big notch out of this bit here so I'm going to show you how you could use it to perhaps repair a piece of wood like this particularly if it was a piece of skirting. I've often, often had to do that in the past where just shove a load of filler in there and then sand it off. And then I've also done a, a couple of or drilled a couple of larger holes here and we're going to have a go at putting a nail and a screw through these so uh, hopefully we'll get a good idea as to uh, how good that product is and I mean at the end of the day it's Ronsil and it does say it does exactly what it says on the tin and if you have a look on the back here it says what else can I do with it and it says you can stain varnish paint sand it plane it file it nail it and screw it so um, let's see and uh, we'll, we'll have a go at a few of those things certainly. Now when you buy yourself a tub of this filler you do get in here a spreader and you also get the hardener. It does seem like quite a small pouch of hardener um, but believe me you really do only need a small amount and if you've never done this before it really is important that you get those quantities relatively close to what they recommend and what they do recommend is that you use a golf ball size amount of filler with a pea size amount of hardener just to give you a bit of an idea. Now we're going to get some of this product mixed up now and what I do like to do is use my own scraper. I actually use a couple of these. It just makes it a lot easier to handle the product. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some up and we do need to be relatively quick because it will go off quite quickly. So just put a, a generous amount of product on here. I'm just looking at what I've got to do uh, or what I've got to fill on here so you kind of need to judge it because it's a bit of a pain having to keep mixing more and more up but even more of a pain when you when you mix too much up and you end up wasting quite an amount so I think that's going to be all right so I'm going to put the lid back on that one and now I'm not quite sure whether this is a golf ball or not but uh, I'd say it's relatively smaller quite a bit smaller than a golf ball. Um, but I'm going to go with about that much hardener. Now I've got a little bit of this left in the pot and I've actually got quite a lot of the hardener left. So I've probably done quite well until now not to use too much. But I guess I want this to go off fairly quick. So I use maybe just a tiny bit more, but that should be good. So what we do now, we literally just mix this together. Really doesn't take much. I'm 
always a good idea to have this on a on a board like this it's just a little bit more manageable probably a good idea to mix it on something that you're not really bothered about messing up either because once this stuff goes off it is absolutely rock solid okay i'm happy that that is mixed up and ready so let's bring this in and let's start off by just getting these holes filled in here now they're quite deep so i need to make sure i get that right inside the hole i might do before we try and put a screw in it or a nail in it i might just give it a a quick sand so if i leave the filler protruding the hole slightly that's probably going to be a good thing and again you can see what it's like to sand it now i don't think i'm going to get much more in those holes so i'm going to leave that like that for now let's have a go fill in this this kind of notch in the wood here again it's really important that you work it in to make sure you haven't left any air bubbles in there or sections where you know you've got a big air block it's a little bit tricky when I've done this before I've actually done it um, on a couple of applications so I might leave it at this stage let it go off let it go hard and then actually apply another amount of filler but for the purpose of this video I'm not too worried about getting the finish on this perfect it's more about showing you what I can or what it can do so there we go I'm quite happy with that I've got a fair amount in there and I've got a fair amount on my thumbnail that's okay that's all right it's good so I've done that bit that bit let's get let's finish off the rest of this then on here now I want to keep this fairly thin so I can get the plane on it so it does also say as I've mentioned already that you can um, use a file on it but I'm really guessing that a file is going to be fairly similar I keep putting my fingers in it I'm guessing that using a file is going to be rather similar to using a you know rather you know using sandpaper but we can give it a go we can give that a go anyway let's use up all of this There we go. Lovely. It's like making a cake. So perfect. We've got the two holes here. We've got that notch which we've filled in. And we've got a section here which we're going to have a go planing. So while this stuff is still wet or tacky, because it is starting to, to go off already, um, I'll just get it off my scrapers it does sand really well and actually when you've got it on your scrapers you can get it off quite easily um, but obviously it's a good idea to get the majority of it off straight away now the tin does say this will go off in 30 minutes um, I'm gonna give it 30 minutes definitely I think I'm gonna go and make myself a cup of tea I'm gonna come back and by the time I've done that this should be pretty much gone off so uh, We'll come back to it in just a minute okay so it's been about 30 minutes and this filler is uh, absolutely solid so uh, we're ready to give this a, a sand a plane and all those other things so i'm going to give this a sand now with this 80 grit paper i'm going to sand this bit back to the wood so we've got the two holes there so we can put a screw and a nail in there and then I'm also going to sand this section so you can see how nicely that kind of plugs that hole or that notch that I created in the end.
Now this has got the whole area of this wood really, really smooth and because the wood was quite rough initially, it has filled in all those tiny, tiny small gaps and ridges where the grain of the wood um, is and obviously it's quite it was quite rough before but now it's really really smooth um, I need to go a bit more so I can see where those two holes were okay there we go so you can see where those two holes were and right now that is super smooth that would be totally ready for painting because that is just you'd never know that there were two massive holes in there okay let's have a go sanding this bit So that's how the top looks already. Super smooth, totally filled that gap, that notch, you would never know. Let's, have, let's just have a go sanding this top bit here. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there, but you can definitely see, look how that has completely filled that notch that we cut out there. That was really, really rough a moment ago, but that filler, that is just amazing. That's such a good filler. That's filled it so well. Okay, so I've got my block plane here and I don't think it's been sharpened um, very recently. So it's not gonna be razor sharp, but certainly gonna give us an idea of how well we can uh, use it on this filler. Well, that's pretty impressive, I've got to say. I mean, look at how smooth that's got that. And the, uh, the plane really isn't that sharp. So um, that's not bad really, is it? Now, I'm not gonna go crazy with the screwing and the nailing. In fact, because the hole is quite small, I'm gonna use this pin rather than use a nail. I think the nail will really just completely destroy it because it's only a small hole, but hopefully this will give us a, an idea of how it responds to having a nail shoved inside it. Plus we've got a number four screw here. So um, we'll, we'll definitely pilot drill it because otherwise it will crack it to pieces. So I'll give it um, a little drill, I'll pilot drill it and I'll screw this in and we'll see we'll see what or how this go. So here we go with the pin. Just gonna keep hold of that so it doesn't flip off. Okay, so you can see that it's definitely gone in. Now, what I can notice is that there is a hairline crack in there, but I'm kind of thinking because that filler has gone inside a hole, it hasn't really got anywhere to expand to. So actually that pin has only gone into the filler and yet it is solid in there. So, uh, Ron Seal, you can definitely nail it. So for this other bit of filler here, um, I'm going to use a three and a half drill um, to pilot for this number four screw. I'm hoping it's not going to be too big. Um, it is a three and a half, as I've said, so. Well, you can definitely drill it. Ah, look at that. That is brilliant. I've got to be honest, I've never actually put a pin or a screw in this filler before, but um, 
I definitely will do in the future now if I need to because that is just really good, fantastic. So for the final part of this test of this wood filler, uh, I've got one more thing to do and that's going to be to see how it reacts or how well you can paint on it. So as it said on the tin, I'm going to paint it and I'm going to use this, funny enough, this Ronsil uh, one coat uh, or one coat all surface primer and undercoat. So hopefully that should work really well. Um, funny enough, I've also got some Ronsil furniture stain. Um, so I'm going to use this on it as well. And then for the varnish, I didn't have any uh, a varnish to hand, but I have got this uh, polyurethane finish spray. So this is going to be very similar to a varnish. So I'm going to use these three products on it to see, you know, how well you can put this on that. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to start off with this primer and undercoat. As I said already, this is a Ron Seal product. Uh, fantastic. I use this a lot and uh, I'll put a link on here right now. So if you want to check this out, um, you can see another video on that. But as I say, use this a lot. Brilliant product. And I'm going to have a go using this um, probably on this top area here so perhaps if I go over the wood as well we can kind of get a bit of an idea how it actually uh, sticks to both obviously it's going to work really well on the wood but also being a I guess being a um, an all surface primer you're pretty much guaranteed that that's going to stick to your filler or you'd hope so anyway especially being another ROM seal product. Well, it's not bad. You can probably see that. I'll get out of the light there. There we go. So it's got a nice smooth finish over the wood and over the filler, as you can see there. So yeah, definitely happy with that. So my next product to try on this is a hardwood garden furniture stain. I used this a, a year or so ago on a bird box that I made and uh, it seems to have weathered quite well but let's give this a go on this other section here. Now I'm kind of guessing initially that if you put this on the wood and the filler at the same time it's going to look quite different you can see that it is actually staining the filler but if i was to put this on the wood as well that would definitely look a whole lot different and uh, that's what you would expect with a stain you know it just tends to give whatever color it is a slightly different color so if it's quite dark it's still going to be quite dark and if it's light it's still going to be quite light particularly with this this is a this is a clear natural matte so it is actually a, a very light stain I've said already you can actually see the difference between where I've stained it and where I haven't so maybe if you did lots of layers of this, lots of coats, it might eventually go as dark as you like it, but um, not sure whether that would actually cover that and make it look the same as the wood, but who knows. But it does take it quite well. You can see, I'll get out the light again. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so last thing we're going to use is this polyurethane finish, which is very, very similar to a varnish. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and spray it on there now. So uh, this is definitely solvent based. The other two products are water-based and obviously water-based products will dry a lot quicker. This is a solvent base. It absolutely stinks. Um, but you might be able to see there that it has given it 
a nice sheen. So it's been a good 30 minutes now and this is all dried. So we've got the, the nice varnish on there. We've got the stain, we've got the primer undercoat and it's all gone on really well. You can also see that we've been able to nail it. We've been able to screw it. We've sanded it. We've planed it. It's absolutely brilliant stuff. So uh, it's definitely getting a, a thumbs up from me, 100%. Hey guys, that's it from me now. So hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. That'll be fantastic. Leave any comments or questions in the box below and I'll see you on the next video.